<laughs> you know what I thought was really interesting too in the marriage, which is something that was convicting again to me, is how close when you have there's a part in your book where you go, you're cute when you do this, but you're controlling when you do this, mm -hmm. and how <laughs> fine the line is to me, mm -hmm. suggesting yeah. to Pete to take out the garbage and make a list of things to the line of nagging, nagging, nagging. <laughs> so and how I, can you do that in a cute way? And honestly, I'm reading this and I go, so I'm cute when I da 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 And he's like, yes, you are. And then I go, but I'm controlling when I, and I started reading what you put in the book. He was right there. Yep, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen, yep, mm -hmm. And I started reading all these things. I'm like, oh, I can't be that bad. But it was interesting that there's that line. Yes. That there's that that there's that it's that close, right? It the, is very close, and that's why it's really important for our, we women, women to really tune into the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit will tell us mm -hmm. uh, just now what you said. Mm -hmm. mm, that was not really nice. You're not his boss. I am, you know. So <laughs> the Holy Spirit will help us out if we clue in. <laughs> and now, Pam, good. you alluded. It, I was just going to say, and it builds mm -hmm. into your marriage too when you go to him and say, okay, hon, you know, even though he doesn't react to that, you say, hon, you know, what I just said to you a couple of minutes, I'm really sorry, that was really raunchy of me, and, and I shouldn't have said it that That's way. That's so powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say, I'm sure people are wondering, you alluded to an acrostic, it's right on the back of the book. Right. <laughs> um, you mentioned get in the game. I, invest in your sex life. Right. One of the things mm -hmm. I've seen as a crisis in young marriages mm -hmm. is babies. Mm -hmm. um, co-lovers become co-parents. Greatest little intruders on earth. <laughs> and yeah. to the man. <laughs> you go ahead, Bill. Well, when our first he son said. was born, I actually thought I was competing with him for her wow. heart. Because he's very demanding. He was relentless. Um, he Squeaky kept, wheel gets the group. Yeah, <laughs> and captivated her heart with doing nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, I was doing the flowers. I was being <laughs> really nice. <laughs> he was laying there doing nothing. <laughs> And captivating her heart. And, and nobody told me how, how it works, that when you ladies have a baby, your love multiplies. Mm -hmm. I, I thought that Pam had this much love, and I was now competing with my oldest son, and he was getting the bigger half. Mm. Wow, and, nice. and because I didn't, I, I didn't really know what to do with the baby, um, I just felt at a loss and was kind of scrambling around. How do I do this marriage and be a parent? And, mm -hmm. and, and how do you stay in love with little sleep? Because our oldest son just... He didn't like to sleep. I don't, I don't know what was up with that. He'd, he'd wake up at 2 in the morning happy. <laughs> you know, which is really irritating. It. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so how tough is this, Pam, when the Bible says the one that is to come first after God is this man. That's right. And, and you are maxed out with a baby. You're exhausted. And, you know, it is a total choice of a woman's heart to put her husband um, first as a, the lover. You know, Jesus and then him. It is a sacrifice. I think that's why, you know, the Bible uses that word sacrifice a lot because it can be hard for us to do that. But it's so important and it's, it's really nice because when we do that, when we give love to our husband, it boomerangs back to us. Mm -hmm. I mean, he then will want to bless us and encourage us and help the, with the baby and mm -hmm. all those things. And um, so we talk about what men and women's needs are in the bedroom and, mm -hmm. and what a man needs is adventure. And so it's, it's good for us women to um, step outside of the box and ask the question, what do you need? What pleases you? Those kind of things. Mm -hmm. and, um, it, and there's a little line in um, the book that says, if you um, love a woman's heart, um, she'll give her body. If mm -hmm. you love a man's body, he'll give you his heart. Yeah. Wow. And, and I got to tell you, I've, I've been a pastor my whole adult life doing weddings. I have yet, never ever met a couple that said, Bill, you know, we've been thinking about this and we want to we wanna get together and like have a mortgage that's a little bit overwhelming and be loaded up with responsibility <laughs> and we want to change diapers together. So can you marry us? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's not why people get married. Yeah. We get married because we like the way we interrupt each other's lives. Yeah. And we want to yeah, keep good. that going. Even in the midst mm -hmm. of responsibility, you want to keep interrupting lives. And that's yeah. why God gave us this sexual relationship is so we could continually interrupt one another's lives and, and develop this shared memory. I was going to ask you, why is, I mean, well, sex is a huge part of this book. Oh, yes. And, right. and I have to applaud you for being so honest mm -hmm. because uh, oftentimes I've, when I've come across books like on this, it's like, well, sex is a gift from God, but they don't say anything about that gift and they don't <laughs> really tell you how to cherish that gift or how to yeah. unwrap that gift mm -hmm. or any of these mm -hmm. things. And you 
you really go into detail in here, and I think that's great Ooh. that you're. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and he was like, read me more. I'm like, oh, it's the first time a book is like. Yeah. No, but I, that's it was, one of the reasons we did it is because <laughs> that gets guys' attention, and then they're willing to learn the other stuff mm -hmm. too. That's true. And the Good. book again that's is entitled "The First Five Years Make the Love Investment That Lasts a, Lasts a Lifetime" by Bill and Pam Farrell, and there is a lot of practical advice in here, exactly. not just in the bedroom, but before you ever get to the bedroom. Right, you give right. a lot of advice directly to the man, what the man needs to know, what the woman needs to know. There's on one page you say, you say women need to feel loved. And you have, I highlight this because I really like this. A husband does himself a huge favor when he determines to remind his wife regularly of her value in his life. Life, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that does That's a lot. For, that is huge. For that the is bedroom. so huge. Yeah. It does. And it does. I have to say this because we we did do this. The story about the the man telling the uh, you telling Pam that you're her mirror. Oh yes. yeah. Guess what? I get what oh, Pete's I now saying. That. I go, Pete. Honestly, I go, can you be my mirror? And he goes, so uh, like, what do you mean? I go, well, <laughs> well, when I am looking in the mirror and there's flaws, will you say something? So he practiced. And he's like, you look beautiful. And then it was kind of, and then he got into it more, and it was really fun. So he's like, okay. I will Good be your mirror. Peace, I awesome. will say the things that when you look in the mirror and you're looking at, you know, your pimples or zits or your hair is all crazy, I will say, you know what, Melinda, you're gorgeous. So then he did that all night. You're That's gorgeous. Great. You're beautiful. And that was great. That was great. And that is such a countercultural message. I mean, mm -hmm. I, 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 I hate to say this, but I was watching Bridget Jones' Diary, the movie, <laughs> and the, there's this one scene in the movie where he, uh, Mark Darcy is the main mm -hmm. character, and he says to her, I, I like you just the way you are. And this is like this groundbreaking statement. Right. And no, none of her friends can believe that a guy would like her just as she is. Or, mm -hmm. or, you know, like that message doesn't get out there that, you know, you're beautiful, you're, you're desirable just as you are. It's always right. about how you can improve yourself, how you can, right. you know, make yourself better, more desirable, more attractive, all these things. It's just like treadmill you're on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. such a countercultural message. Yeah, and that's God's is. heart, really, isn't it? it? Is. It's so powerful. Like, um, on our 25th wedding anniversary, some of our friends wrote a um, song called I Will Be Your Mirror mm -hmm. um, based on that story about when I stepped out of the shower and I was criticizing myself and Bill wrapped his arms around me. He said, oh Pam, let me be your mirror. If you need to know how beautiful you are and what a great woman of God you are, you come see me and let me, and let me tell you. And if I have to break every mirror in our house to get you to believe me, I will. Because from now on, I'll be your mirror. Okay, honestly, <laughs> honestly, and I'm reading that to Pete, and then he said, be the mirror, and then he's like, oh my goodness, all right, I'll be the mirror. I mean, that is, that is, it's great, yeah. it's, that's beautiful. And where did beautiful. that come from, Bill? Where did that come from? Desperation. <laughs> Desperation? <laughs> We are That's He's thinking she's going to get all depressed. We're not going to have any more sex the whole rest of our honeymoon. 